Hey everybody, it's Chase with AV Pop Culture again, and today I am here to talk to you about my first ever bootleg copies of films on physical media. I just got them, and uh, I definitely have some thoughts, so pop that tape in. I got you. Let's go do this. All right, so I am here, and you probably saw the thumbnail. I got a Star Wars shirt on, one of my favorite like little uh, retro Star Wars shirts. So you you know I'm here to talk about Star Wars and um, the bootlegs that uh, I just got. And this is my first ever bootleg physical media of any kind. I am generally in the camp because I'm a filmmaker and an independent filmmaker of uh, a big no on uh, bootlegs. But there are some situations for me where I started to say, hey, like, wait a minute. Um, and not all situations are created equal. Like, for instance, me as an independent filmmaker, if people are bootlegging my films and putting them out there online while they're just being released or what have you it it totally kills i mean cuz i'm i'm probably not going to make millions and millions of dollars so if if you're taking away even 5 or 10,000 dollars that potentially could go to the people who make uh, the movies it's a big deal um and it kind of happens a lot with independent films because people just think, oh, well, no studio is going to come after me. So I can get a copy and rip it or rip it off streaming and just put it out there. Like, um, I, even though I have the rights back to my movies, <laughs> every now and then I'll try to put something on here for you guys, like a clip from the movies, and I'll get copyrighted uh, on YouTube from where um, the distributor had the right, the, the distribution rights to it before. And they had to put that all out on YouTube because people were literally like just putting the whole movie on there for free while it was in active, like new release. And so I've always kind of been against that. And as a general rule, I, I am. But there are other situations like with Star Wars where these movies have been out for you know, 45 years or so, to, uh, going back to 77. Uh, you've been out for, what's that, uh, 47 years. So, you know, I have bought these movies in a million different ways, and uh, what I wanted is a good quality of the original film. I am not a big... Um, advocate of going back in and altering films and you know Steven Spielberg they got Steven Spielberg to do that with E.T. where he went back and did allow the digital altering to take uh, guns out of police officers hands and put walkie talkies in them and now he's on the other side of that he is the biggest like opponent of going back and doing that because rightly so uh films are art that should rec uh, like you know represent the time that they were made whether that's through uh special effects whether it's through language or actions or what is uh, socially acceptable at the time the movie should be a time mark for that um that's one of my biggest problems with streaming now. They're starting to use AI to go back and not just censor movies, old movies, but change them to make them socially acceptable and less offensive to people with today's sensibilities. And not even everybody has all the same sensibilities. So to me, that is a problem. That is censorship. That is dictating... Uh, and changing like history and what I watch and uh, it's basically a rewriting of history and I don't agree with it. it whether it's something as big as like social commentary uh, or whether it's something as small as um, 
you know, adding in more stormtroopers or whatever. That's not what it was. It's not historically accurate. And it's a false representation of history, in my opinion, and a false representation of the original art that was created, the original film that was created, and I do not like it. I do not like it in any way, shape, or form. I do not believe in censorship like that. Just because you believe it's that you're doing something to make it better or to make it less offensive does not make it right. You don't get to decide what is, is better and what is less offensive or any of that kind of stuff. In my opinion, you should just be preserving the art as it is and preserving things as they are, whether it's movies, uh, actual painting type art uh, or books or anything else. Those should be preserved. They should mark the time they were in. It allows us to see where we've come from, where we're going, and, you know, things that we should either get back to or never get back to. Like, but if you erase that and change it and alter it, uh, it's like those who, uh, you know, don't study and don't learn from history are doomed to repeat it. And um, we don't want that in any way, shape, or form. And uh, I want the original movies that I grew up with that mark that time for me where I was alive, that mark that, that they were groundbreaking when they came out, cult favorites or whatever. I don't want those changed. I just want them delivered to me in a good quality. And, and I am like... Um, you know, there's, there's ways that I, I feel two different ways about that. Like, um, as a filmmaker, a writer, director, I understand like wanting to go back and fix things that you wish you could have done at the time that you didn't have the ability to do. Uh, and now you do, but that's, that's the film. It belongs to you. Yes. Um, but it, it belongs to everyone now in a way like, um, so like James Cameron, I've defended him on like true lies and things like that. And there are a lot of reasons that some scenes I went into all that. Some scenes in his 4k remasters could look the way they do and, and stuff. But when it comes to like color grade or grain versus no grain, that is like totally subjective. Uh, you're not altering like words in the film. You're not altering dialogue. You're not altering like you're not adding more stormtroopers or changing what an actor's face looks like. Um, for instance, in Star Wars, if you look and I found some pictures of this because I never could get good pictures of my screens because it's just it's it's too too much light uh, in here in this room. Um, so. If you look at the original pictures of, like, the Emperor, for instance, uh, in the original despecialized, just the original versions of, like, Star Wars, Return of the Jedi, whatever, when you see the hologram of the Emperor, it looks one way, and that's the way we remember it. And then later, they went back digitally and put a, you know, different actor, put the different face on there, the one that you see now in the, the prequels. That's not what it was. So like that, that to me, that's, that's a problem. Like if you replace, you know, you, and you can do it anywhere. You replace an actor's face with another actor's face in a different version. That's different than he took too much grain out or he changed the color correction to something I don't like. That's those two things. Those things are not the same. Those things are not the same because that's subjective because you take too much grain out and these people over here don't like it. Um, because they don't like the digital waxy fake over sharp look. And then if you don't take the grain out, then there is this other group of people over here that don't like it because they want a, um, natural, you know, or they, they want a digital look, not the natural film, you know, film look. So like, it doesn't matter which way you go. Uh, it's like a damned if you, I told somebody this today on comments, like when it comes to, grain versus overly digital and waxy looking and, and too much DNR. And we don't know why they might have used it or how the, all the, there's a million reasons that's something different, but they're in a damned if you do, damned if you don't situation. Use too much DNR and clean it up 
and the people who want natural grain get angry and say it looks like crap. And then if you do, if you do leave the natural grain, then a lot of times those same people will say it's too grainy or you'll have a whole other set of people that are like, I hate grain, get rid of it. So unfortunately, a lot of times it's the same group that complains if it's too much DNR, complains if the grain is there. So you can't win. But like that kind of stuff, I'm not talking about that. That That's like subjective tweaks and, and stuff like that. I'm talking about when you alter, when you put stormtroopers that weren't there, when you change uh, who shot first, all that, you change an actor's face, you change dialogue, stuff like that, that is off limits. Even if, even if you're the director and writer to me, that is off limits because it, it's... Or you need to announce that you're doing this separate version and do both versions. If you want to do that, that's fine. Say, here's the version where it's altered and updated in 4K. Here's the original version in 4K. Or put them together on a release where you have two different discs. Then that's fine. And you can see before and after like, the, and pick which one you want. But don't try to release it and make it look uh, to the buyer that it is the original version that they grew up with when it is not, that is dishonest, and that is censorship and altering history, and I don't like it. So there, there is my... So when it comes to Star Wars, I want the original versions that I grew up with that um, were originally in the theaters, I want those versions without all the altering done to them, but I want them in a good quality. And that's hard to get. And over the years, I have spent so much money on Star Wars that I am okay for once going out here and picking up these, um, I'll go one at a time, picking up these 4K scans on Blu-ray, these bootlegs. Empire Strikes Back is my favorite, by the way, movie of the Star Wars. Um, and I am okay with getting them. And I'm going to tell you, I watched these. So you have, um, you know, the, the, all, this is the original versions and this is project, I think it's called project 4k 77, uh, project, uh, 80 4k plus whatever. I, I'll try to put it up here. Basically what it is, is where fans have taken it upon themselves to get a hold to 35 millimeter prints and try to do a 4k scan and then, um, put them on a Blu-ray. Now I will tell you that I put these in and I had the metadata come up on my 4K player and show me, and these are at minimum 1080p, and every now and then, um, somehow my, my player would pop up that these were 2160p. Um, so that was interesting. Um, and the quality on these... I really wish I could have got some clean uh, side by sides uh, pictures, but I'm, I'm not into that because there's so much. Uh, I've talked about it before, like your TV, my TV, picture of a screen, picture of it ripped, compression, what YouTube does to it. There's so much. I, I'm not a big believer in side by side photos and stuff like that uh, as referent, like other than just like, here's what I'm talking about. But direct comparisons, usually when I see those, I just call BS because there's 8,000 factors that can change um, those screenshots side by side uh, to, to, to fit anybody's argument. But these, man, there are scenes, I compared this to, hold on one second. So I compared this mostly to this uh, like video quality to this old set here that I have. Uh, I have not bought any Star Wars 4, 4Ks and stuff. I don't want anything. I really don't want the specialized version. I don't want the stuff that's added unless it comes with the other two. I just don't, that, that I don't want it. Um, so these are the last ones that I bought um, of the films. And these, you know, it says include digitally remastered and original theatrical movies. Uh, and I don't even know how long I've had these. It's been a good while. But I'm going to tell you that the quality, um, there's a scene at close to the beginning of A New Hope where uh, R2-D2 and C-3PO 
are it's like a wide shot and they're going across the desert of Tatooine and uh, you on on these versions you can't like all the detail surrounding them in the mountains and the sand is lost it's like darkened out you can't see it on this it's like you are out there with them in the mountains i mean it is like uh, in the the desert with the mountains on the side it is that good it is that good and uh empire strikes back on hoth like out in all the snow and everything on your your 4k setup even though when it's reading 1080p, I mean, these are supposed to be 4K scans done in 1080, they, they're then compressed down to be on a Blu-ray. It is beautiful. Like, I I don't know if I need to buy, a, a like, a if they even have, I don't even know, I haven't even looked if they have the despecialized versions on 4K anymore. Like, I, I, I haven't even bothered to look because I've been so irritated with how things have gotten messed with with Star Wars. I mean, I can't imagine it looking a whole lot better. I mean, it is, uh, these things look phenomenal. I want to get me some slip covers like this. What got me started on this is my friend Brian over at The Last Movie Standing. You guys should check him out. Uh, he did a thing on bootlegs and he, he told me about these films. And I was like, you know, I want a good quality film without all of that altering and everything that's been done. And these are phenomenal. I got to pick up some slip covers, as you guys know. I'm, I'm a, I, this is killing me not to have slip covers on these. Um, I mean, it's killing my soul, and um, I just don't have time to make new ones for myself. I make a lot of slip covers, but this is like the old VHS covers, which I find very cool. Um, it, you know, it's just simple artwork, but the old VHS, I like it, and. I'm so happy with these. Like, the sound is good. The picture is outstanding. It doesn't have all the bullshit added in. It doesn't have history altering stuff. Uh, there is one shot Han shoots. Like, you know, um, that's how it's supposed to be. He was always like an anti hero scoundrel. Like, we didn't need to go and change that for people's sensibilities, which is what I'm talking about. Like, you didn't need... People already loved Han Solo. He's the anti-hero scoundrel. He was the the outlaw with a heart of gold type thing. That's who he friggin' was. You didn't need to change it to justify anything for people's sensibilities going forward. That's what's happening on streaming. That's what's happening with a lot of releases. I am totally against it. So in this case, because of that, and because I have spent so much money and these movies have been around for 45 years, I finally went against what I normally feel is right. And I picked up the uh, these bootlegs, these homemade copies, these home brews, whatever you want to call it. Uh, this is this is where people and this will happen to society at large, man. This is where people have enough of being told what to do, what to think, being given things, they forced to take things they don't want, changing things that they love, all that. Eventually people get fed up and they're like, I'm not paying for that. I'm not standing for that anymore. We know what's right. We know what we want. Stop telling us. Stop doing things. We will do it our damn selves. We will take over and take control. And that's what you got here. And, um, I love it. I mean, I'm not going to say where I got it. You can check Etsy. You can check eBay. All that stuff. There are plenty of these out there. Project 4K 77. That's a good place to start looking. And uh, I think these are phenomenal. I will not make a habit of um, buying bootlegs. There'll be times that I consider it. Like, if I believe... I think there's a nasty trick that Netflix is doing, largely. Like, that uh, some of these streaming companies do... Uh, they don't put stuff out on physical media because they want you to keep having to pay subscription to watch it. And I think that's why they stopped putting uh, Stranger Things out. That's why the only they put some of Cobra Kai out on a DVD only, like, and they haven't even put it all out. They they want you to have to continue forever to subscribe to their service in order to watch those films, and they can ever increase price on you. And 
they can, um, you know, take those off at any time, change them, alter them at any time. And, uh, I'm not okay with that. So like there are situations where I would still can, I would consider picking up some things in that situation because I have more than paid over the years for streaming multiple times over. I am not going to give them $20 a month infinitum forever in order to watch a handful of movies that they're holding hostage from people that you've paid for a million times over. And I think that's kind of a nasty, I think that's nasty work right there. That's, that's what they're doing to make you stay having to subscribe. They're actually foregoing that money on the front end that they could get from physical media in order to try to bleed you dry over time. And I'm not down for that either, especially when you are um, censoring content, changing content, cutting content, going up on prices, all that kind of stuff. I don't know if you guys know, but Warner Brothers just killed Boomerang, uh, Cartoon Network stuff, all gone, unless you subscribe to uh, HBO uh, Max. And they, they cut it all down. The website's gone, all that gone. More stations that they own are going to own are going to be gone. More streaming that they own is going to be gone. And um, they want to, to force you into subscribing and they can change it, alter it, or charge you more at any time. So that could lead to me picking up some more of these over time in special situations. What you'll never see me do is like a new release movie uh, that's out there or something like that. Uh, I will never, ever do that. And um, because I know how hard it takes money out of people's pockets. At this point, this isn't taking money out of anyone's pocket. And I've paid for these over and over and over again. I've bought Star Wars in so many, you know, different ways over the years. So different story here. I love these, but let me know. I know it's a controversial topic. Let me guys, uh, let, uh, let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Just want to do a quick video and talk about these because these are awesome. And uh, I'm in, I enjoyed them uh, watching them. And uh, I mean, I didn't watch the whole things. I watched like uh, I watched a new hope and then I watched uh, Empire Strikes Back and I just kind of looked at Return of the Jedi, <laughs> that part. Uh, but uh, let me know what you think in the comments. Uh, this is a different kind of video, but we do lists, rankings, 4K reviews, physical media news, talking all things pop culture, physical media, and movies uh, from a filmmaker and fan's point of view here. So if that is your kind of thing, like, subscribe, ring that bell. Consider joining the channel. You can join down below. Uh, here or on my Patreon. Uh, the biggest difference is I can get away with more stuff on Patreon than I can on YouTube, and Patreon only takes like 5%, where YouTube takes like 50 But it doesn't matter. You don't have to do any of that to, uh, to hang around. Just like and subscribe. But if you do want to join, you get all kinds of stuff. Today I posted um, a never-released trailer from uh, my film Dark Road 79 when uh, uh, this was done by by the uh, studio that was going to release the film before we just uh, we decided to to not release it that way because I, I wanted physical just different reasons, um, but a great company a great company um, and um, it's on there so it's cool you get to see behind the scenes stuff making of all kinds of different things and um, uh, I even uh, I had some people ask me. Because there's a running joke about Chase's targets, uh, like the physical media stuff that I target. So I guess that's kind of my word. And people are always kind of wanting to know when I'm even when I'm not doing news, like what am I targeting and uh, can they send me anything like whatever they want to send me or whatever and, and just information. So down in the description, I also am going to try to keep a running list of the targets that I have out there, whether they're out of print or in print. Um, and you guys because that's, it's kind of stuff. I don't just buy everything. I, uh, I target <laughs> the stuff that I think is super cool and that I think will sell out and will be hard to get later and, uh, you know, stuff like that. So I keep a running list of that down there. And if you guys want to, uh, send me a letter or anything, a hello, uh, my business address is down there too. You can check that out. But, uh, I know that's a lot. <laughs> so until, until next time, be kind, rewind like always. This is Chase with AV Pop Culture, and I'll see you real soon. <laughs> bye bye. How come with bootlegging, I just always immediately think about uh, Smokey and the Bandit? I can't help it. That's bootlegging, son.